Good evening, you are listening to Steve and Jana with Israeli News Live. And it's very sad, Steve, what's happening in our nation right now. We know that President Trump is encouraging all the governors of all 50 states to bring in National Guards to stop those riots. However, I believe that we really do not have the government and that we are in the middle of the operation or a second phase of the operations that will lead to the complete full-blown new world order takeover and that this we are in the middle of hegelian dialectic right now uh, where they create crisis so they can have a solution and to me it sounds still like it's a martial law when you have military patrolling streets or you know when they are deployed in, in the streets of the united states in america this is martial law. Yes, martial law. And the thing is, is it's very much being fabricated. Um, yes. You know, it's, <clears throat> it it's, didn't just happen because of one cruelty that, that we saw uh, to Mr. Floyd. This type of cruelties have been happening. Police cruelty has been happening for decades now. Yes. And Minneapolis, Minnesota has also got a history of violence towards uh, citizens. There have been many deaths. I think there's been like something like 143 deaths of citizens there. Uh, majority of the black community, but it's not limited to the black community. Both men and women, white, black, Hispanic, have all been killed at the hands of uh, the brutality of, of police tactics. But this is something that happens all across the United States. And it is a, a major concern that needs to be dealt with as well. But uh, in reality, this really has nothing to do with that. There's a much larger agenda that the New World Order agendists are working on uh, to bring about their agenda. And that's yes. what we're seeing. Like you were saying in one of your videos that these race wars have been pre-planned. As I saw the letters that you have received from Israeli Mossad, when they were saying they're going to genocide American nation, they will start with the black people and the, the uh, Latino communities, but whites will be affected as well. So basically that's something you have been warning about for a very long time. And the video you did, they took down today, Steve, on YouTube. It was officially removed by YouTube where you showed history of your warnings uh, to the American people of yes. what they are planning. So this is not just something that happened randomly. This is absolutely prepared event that plays into the game of new world order and as much as as the evangelicals want to say oh trump is just trying to protect americans and the constitution and freedoms this is absolutely not true trump is part of it he's playing his part in this entire scheme of hegelian dialectic where they're creating chaos creating problems to which they are going to bring solutions so but anyway tonight i just kind of wanted to go back to this coronavirus because some people think that coronavirus just disappeared and it's not coming back now of course that was a, another psyop right it was a psyop operation perpetrated upon um american public and the world and the world this entire coronavirus infection um, and here Cuomo is warning that protests could spark coronavirus comeback in New York. And they have already warned that there will be a second wave of in infections and, and this disease. And they're going to do lockdowns again and uh, the social distancing and masks. I was still seeing people wearing masks yes. and, and some stores still have the social distancing lines and arrows like Publix in uh, Florida, they still have arrows and, and signs for social distancing and Costco stores are requiring mandatory masks if you enter their store. So these type of things, they are just not going away. But I wanted to show you tonight National COVID-19 Testing Action Plan by Rockefeller Foundation. So let's read through this, Stephen, because this is 
uh, this proves that it was completely pre-planned and what they're planning on doing with this tracking and tracing, okay? It says here the testing is our way out of this crisis. Instead of, uh, what, what is that word here, right? Ratcheting. Ratcheting between an unsustainable shutdown and a dangerous, uncertain return to normalcy, the United States must mount a sustainable strategy with better tests and contact tracing and stay the course for as long as it takes to develop a vaccine or cure. Any plan to do so must win the faith of private and public sector leaders across the country and of individual Americans that they and their loved ones will be safer when we begin to return to daily life. Now, of course, it's always in the name of safety and security sure it and it's always uh, under the guise of we are helping you, we are for you, okay, which is complete deception and a lie. But the Rockefeller Foundation, Rockefellers are the same people who founded Israel as a state. Yes. Okay, so let's keep this in mind. They are Zionists. Okay, the Rockefeller Foundation exists to meet moments like this. Wow, thank you. In the past two weeks, we have brought together experts and leaders from science, industry, academia, public policy, and government across sectors and political ideologies to create a clear, pragmatic, data-driven, actionable plan to beat back COVID-19. Yes, Steve. Uh, I want to just make a statement here as you were finishing that paragraph. I have an insider very deep in the government that did research on the Rockefeller and Rothschild family. Mm -hmm. They had access to records that we do not have access to. And this is a person, very high degree, that in doing a secret research on the Rockefeller and Rothschild family discovered that they are actually direct descendants of the royal house of the Egyptian pharaohs. Hmm. And so this doesn't surprise me, especially with the releasing of the video I did today, which I expect may be taken down as well. So I put it on Patreon like I did the other video that took down. We put them both on Patreon. Uh, but we tried to put them here so that people can see the information. This is a true reptilian agenda, not just serpent, reptilian and, uh, Isn't that the same, serpent and reptilian? Well, the thing is, you have Nachash, a serpent, you have Tanin, which is uh, like a crocodile, but I've noticed that they're intermediately used throughout the scripture, as well as viper and ass. Those are different names as well in Hebrew. But it, it seems to indicate that these are reptilians. They're cold-blooded, uh, very demonic in, in fact, Satan himself, I didn't mention that in the video tonight, but Satan himself was described uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls as a serpent-like creature, had the face of a serpent, uh, and his appearance was darkened. But I say this, and the reason I bring this out, this is what we're dealing with among the elite. This is not just your everyday average Jewish person. This is not your, even your every, everyday average, uh, Orthodox Jew that, that is a Talmudist. He's not necessarily a reptilian, but this type of family elites, they come from that. And I have that information given to me directly by a very high official. Exactly. And we know that the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, Kissinger, Soros, they, they are known as Jews because they have embraced Kabbalah, okay, Kabbalah and Talmud. And they are the ones who founded the state of Israel for the future New World Order Center, yes. where the um, AI Messiah false messiah will come as right. a solution to the chaos that they create. So, and, and I do believe that they are part of the mingled seed. They do come from a Jewish genealogy as well. As Jesus said, yes, you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Mm -hmm. And But they came through that, their, their parents somewhere way back mingled that seed. But in the case of the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, they went all the way back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So even before there was a mingling of the seed in Babylon, this family here 
where seeds that were mixed during Babylon, they're actually part of Jane's and Jambers bloodline, mm -hmm. which again is a reptilian bloodline that worship the uh, the cobra, the snake, wow. uh, the snake of Egypt. So yeah. I just want to throw that in there because people need to realize what we're dealing with. This is why you have that agenda. Yes, the re the new world order is a reptilian agenda, Steve. Yes, it and, is. Um, Anyway, uh, these are the ones that Bible describes in Book of Revelation that they call themselves Jews, but they are the synagogue of Satan. And um, anyway, let's keep reading. What what do we find in Rockefeller Foundation? How this entire COVID, everything was pre-planned, and what they the, what they are planning on doing. It says our national COVID nineteen testing action plan lays out the precise steps necessary to enact, enact robust testing, robust testing, tracing, and coordination to more safely reopen our economy, starting with a dramatic expansion of testing from 1 million tests per week to initially 3 million per week, and then 30 million per week, backed by emergency network for COVID-19 testing to coordinate and underwrite the testing market, a public-private testing technology accelerator, and a national initiative to rapidly expand and optimize the use of U.S. university and local lab capacity. Anyway, it says here, together, listen to this word, together, okay? We are in this together. It says, together we can do this. This action plan benefits from and builds on prior proposals, current efforts, and a broad participation of experts from so many fields. So anyway, when you read this, you have to understand that this is coming from Rockefeller Foundation. This is who is dictating our government. I know it kind of looks like in the, uh, in the imagery here, similar to that of a spider's web, not exactly, but similar to that of a, of a spider's web, which yes. Isaiah refers to them as spiders as well. I just saw these biblical things out there because it's things where you have to, you, when you look at these things, you can't help but notice certain little yeah. oddities. Imagery. Yes. But anyway, here we go. Of course, it is the New World Order takeover it's, it says, this is a new website that the United Nations has, unnwo.org, United Nation New World Order. Wow. Org. And look what they say. Let's take our planet back. Wow. Notice what there's a our... bullseye right in the middle, almost like a target. No, but uh, listen, our planet back? Yeah. That, well, well, first that, of all, it's a different why, species then, right, isn't it? Right. It's like different species want the planet back to them, like we are the enemy. Why? Because Christians were given power to tread on the heads of Serpents snakes and, and scorpions, scorpions and, right? right, exactly. And, and, and we were ruling and we are ruling and reigning with, with Christ, Christ right, right now. now. So this is basically the agenda, just like June yes. Knight said, together means to get her. Yes, they want to, go to get after the, the one. And, yeah. and who surrendered the power back over to the serpent and his, his race? It's the Christians, it's evangelicals, it is these false shepherds, these hirelings. Right, so let's take our planet back. These are Rockefellers talking to you, the New World Order reptilians. They want this planet back to them, and we are seen as an enemy. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to have Deborah Tavares on again, and she's the one who said that in all of the federal documents, we the people are marked as the enemy. We are the enemy. So you know how they are now uh, conditioning people to be afraid of each other? We are to look at, upon every person as possible COVID case. Like you are to be afraid of your neighbor, afraid and stay six feet away and yes. all of this. So they basically uh, look at us as a virus. We are the virus to them. We are the disease to them. We are yes. all disease. Whether you have symptom or no symptom, now they're, you know, how they condition people saying that even asymptomatic people can be carriers of the disease. So they're conditioning with complete false science, using false science. Uh, but anyway, let's take our planet back. Wow. The United Nations New World Order Project is a global high-level initiative founded in 2008 to advance a new economic paradigm, a new political order, and more broadly, a new world order 
for humankind. Now, so I can tell you why it was founded in 2008, because one of the sources that I have from the White House told me that in 2008, this is when they b- thought they were going to start this initiative. But something went wrong. Things were not quite ready, and it got postponed until now. Now, it was a little different verbiage than what I'm saying there. But if you go back to 2008, we also had the SARS virus outbreak. We had the financial collapse. Uh, And then next thing you know, things don't work out exactly what they were thinking. So they have to quickly um, uh, take and and reshore up the economy and make it last for another, uh, you know, 12 years. Yes, something happened. But now they're ready. I mean, look, it's in the open. They're not hiding it anymore. They're saying development by 2030. Okay, that's like a last decade here. And the happiness, well-being and freedom of all life on Earth by 2050. Wow. Okay. And look at these new terms they came up with. Capitalism. So not capitalism, but capitalism. Okay. Capitalism is a new economic paradigm which places happiness, well-being, and freedom at the center of human development model systems and all life. I mean, they dress this reptilian agenda in a beautiful words. It's always for your safety, for your well-being. We are happy. We are at peace. After all, doesn't Apostle Paul say that when they declare peace and security, sudden destructions will come upon them yes. and they will not escape. Okay, so you might expect now they're going to do this in the name of happiness, well-being, security, health, freedom, that kind of deception, Steve. And soon we will play a very important video, but here, and I'm going to mirror that video it, on somebody else's channel, but it's so important to watch and pay attention to this video because it spells out this agenda was completely pre-planned, nothing but deception. But anyway, how do you like the name capitalism, Steve? It's a new economic order, new mm. economic paradigm. Now, look at this one. Unido happiness. U-N-I-D-O-H. I mean, D-O. Happiness. The United Nations International Day of Happiness recognizes happiness as a fundamental human right and goal. I wonder if this will happen after a vaccine that will do a chemical lobotomy. Well, no doubt that's exactly what the plan is. And, you will be uh, such a zombie. That you won't care about That you won't care. You will be you so happy. You government. won't have any anyway. <laughs> Your government's taking care of you. This is getting insane. People, this is insanity. It's, it's, it's such, a, such an evil agenda. And then the UN Global Goals, advancing new economic paradigm of capitalism for humanity, means mobilizing 30 trillion toward achieving the 17 UN Global Goals, 17 of them, 30 trillion is mobilized. So they're spending a lot of dollars on this agenda. Well, what's interesting is both the source that I have and the source or the information that Celeste has, the former uh, uh, FEMA, FEMA employee. Uh, employee, one gives it 16, the other gives it 18. And so, the, well, this one here tells us 17. So there are definitely to some degree right in there um, in the same uh, mindset of what their plans are. 17 global goals, 169 targets by 2030. You know, from now on, you know how everything happens suddenly overnight and it goes to worse constantly? I expect it to go to much, much worse. Uh, It's never going to be back to normal. It is going to a very weird world. And soon I will talk to you about um, U.S. Navy and Pentagon recognizing UFOs as extraterrestrial threats. But anyway, we're coming back to this. Now, this is a 14-minute video, but this video is so important. It is mirrored from the True Reporter channel. And let's just watch it, Steve. It's very important. And a permanent method for total control of the citizenry. In this plan that they disguised as an academic scenario, as they call The method they would use to gain complete prison-like control of the entire population was to infect them 
with a devastating biological pandemic, and then, under the guise of protecting us from this threat, they would be free to implement their final solution, a prison state. The prison state that they need to keep their grip on power. As usual, the fascists disguise their crimes as helping us, and as is typical of this new type of fascism, they always make the claim that we the people are begging them to have more and more control over us. As you watch this video, remember that the deep state concocted this scheme in 2010 as a quote-unquote simulation of what is to come. The following is proof that the deep state is behind these viral pandemics. Absolutely positively, pandemics are now the tool of choice for the fascists, known as the deep state, and the private contractors that they contract these pandemics out to. For the deep state, to make an international pandemic isn't even a high-tech operation, it's a no-tech operation. It's easy. A simple vial of Ebola, SARS, MERS, Spanish flu, or coronavirus, or whatever they come up with in their secret bioweapons lab is all they need to bring the world into their total control. The only thing you have to remember is if they can do it, they will do it, which means they already have done it. The ruling establishment has a lot of, they, they will stop at nothing to complete their toolkit of control. Right? So one of the things that has been missing from the toolkit of toll control has been quarantines and curfews, right? Mm -hmm. So now, welcome to the new world in America where to get on a bus, to go through a subway station, if you think that the procedures at the TSA are onerous, right? Guess this is coming to a bus depot near you. It's a more invasive way and the ruling class needs this because, let me say, if the ruling class ever saw yeah. wide-scale civil unrest, you'd see an Ebola outbreak in America right away. Okay, so this is, what you see is that Ebola is... Another tool in the toolbox of the ruling of class control. Yeah, to, of repression, to keep down Absolutely, repression. positively, 100%. This is a tool. Right. E Ebola doesn't just magically start spreading. Mm -hmm. And then we have these doctors that come back here. The white people, of course, live. Mm -hmm. you know, the two whites who got it. Or survived. All the black people are going to die. Uh, right? It's very possible that uh, these uh, NG, one of one of these NGOs over there, is going around uh, with a veil of uh, Ebola or spreading it from a small plane onto villages. The point is, is to get hundreds of thousands of people infected with it and uh, create uh, the next phase of control. Now, one of the things I'd like to show to back up my uh, uh, my claims here. Uh, here's a document from the uh, Rockefeller Foundation. Rockefeller Foundation, right there. Oh, you can oh, zoom in on that, where my finger is. It's called Scenarios for, for the Future International Development, the Rockefeller Foundation. All right. Okay, let's take a look at what they're saying here. This is uh, something like a 50, 60 page document. I'd like to, you to go to uh, page 18, if you can look at this up on the internet, but I'll read it off to you. It's called lockstep, lockstep. And this is a, a phrase that I used uh, right after 2001 when I saw the entire system of the United States, including the population, were in lockstep. Uh, so the Congress went along, and yes, it was Osama bin Laden, and the people waved their flag and said, I hate, 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 and everything was in lockstep. Well, in 2010, uh, they published this, Rockefeller Foundation, and here's what they're saying. They're saying that... Uh, it's, they call it a scenario. These are scenario narratives, and they speak about it in the past tense. So they put out this scenario, lockstep. A world of tighter, top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. Okay, I'll read a, a little bit of it. In 2012, the pandemic that the world had been anticipating for years, nobody was anticipating a pandemic, finally hit. Unlike 2009's N1H, uh, H1N1, 
Uh, this new influenza strain uh, originating from wild geese, they use wild, they use some scenario, but this is Ebola they're yeah, talking yeah, about. Ahead. Even the most pandemic prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed when the virus streaked around the world, infecting nearly 20% of the global population and killing 8 million in just seven months, the majority of them healthy young adults. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. You, you can see the, you can see the agenda just naked, raw, naked control agenda written down, and it's anybody's guess how this becomes effectuated in real life. So whether this is written specifically as marching orders or whether people take it upon themselves in the intelligence networks to say, okay, well, this has been produced, so this is the plan here. But these narratives have to be written in advance because the intelligence agencies don't know how to do this, these narratives. They need help. So the, these think tanks, they come up with these like Rand Corporation, Rockefeller Foundation. These are think tanks of death. They're not the think tanks, they're not there to find great ways to help people. Right? Okay, the pandemic also had a deadly effect on economics. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt, right? which is what they want. They want a completely isolated world, right? Debil debilitating industries like tourism and breaking global su supply chains. Well, of course they want tourism stopped because they don't they're not in the tourism business and they want you at home in your house in front of the TV then they got you because once you watch the TV they they own your soul even locally wait a second we're on television I mean commercial television let's say uh, national yeah. even locally a uh, normally bustling shops and offices sat empty for months okay so th I love how they talk about it in the past tense in 2010 right? the pandemic blanketed the planet though disproportionate numbers in Africa died <laughs> Southeast Asia and Central America where the virus spread like wildfire it sounds like the opening uh, monologue of a disaster movie right exactly now listen to here's the good yeah. stuff now but even in developed countries containment was a challenge now here's this one I love this one the United States initial policy of strongly discouraging in quotation marks strongly discouraging citizens from flying proved deadly in its leniency so they're saying oh so they're saying that th no keep going okay. it. proved it's deadly good. in its leniency Leniency. So they should have been tougher, right? Accelerating the spread of the virus, not just within the United States, but across borders. However, a few countries did fare better. China, in particular. The Chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders, saved millions of lives, stopping the spread of virus far earlier than in other countries. So the message is here is we have to look towards the Chinese, the oppressive totalitarian, totalitarian. Yeah, Chinese regime as an example of what we, we need to be doing here. And of course, the ruling class here loves the Chinese. Chinese regime because they have the, they have demonstrated to the ruling class the most efficient form of author capitalism, which is, which is authoritarian capitalism. So we have capitalism, but unfortunately we have this like veil. I get it. We it's have this veil this of democracy. It's, this yeah. is very interesting. This is, continue on. Please. Okay, uh, okay. China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their muscles, flexed their authority, and imposed airtight rules and restrictions. You can see the agenda. Hey, no, go, 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 go. Okay. From the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to communal spaces like uh, That's what's happening right trained, now. Yeah, but soon it's going to be like body, you know. I, it's It'll not, be at the subway? Yeah. They, they, well, Is that what you're saying? We'll be going through this in the oh, subway to get on buses absolutely, and the subway? Uh, absolutely. Things positively. like that. Absolutely. And, and what, what this means, though, is, you know, don't, don't think about having a, you know, a cigarette, a joint on you, or, you know, I mean, basically, you can't. This is a, a dragnet for everything. So, if if in order for you, oh, in other words, just like with stop and frisk, this is ultimate stop and frisk. Uh, this is uh, the this ultimate is cavity stop and fix, cavity search kind of thing. All right. So during the pandemic, national leaders rather flex their authority. You know, they're 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 they're, they're, they're uh, now there's some good stuff. Listen to this. Uh, and even supermarkets, they want uh, body checks at supermarkets, okay? So basically, what they're saying is they're building a system where 
every move you make, you, you got to go through them. You okay. can't get food. Can't what happens if you go to the farmer's market? Right. <laughs> Here's the good stuff now. I mean, it just keeps getting better. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. That's the whole point. So they're going to so get rid of... Did that happen already with 9-11? Uh, of course. 9-11 was how many, 14 sure. years ago, and sure. we still have all these uh, draconian So they're going to put the body cavity USA searches Patriot in. USA Patriot and That's all right. that. That's right. So in order to get to a supermarket, you got to have a body cavity search, and then when there's no more evil, evil uh, well, you know what? We kind of like this way because we have an incomplete infrastructure of uh, a, mm. a control grid. Like, in order pr to protect themselves from the spread of increasingly global problems, from pandemics <coughs> and national terrorism, to environmental crisis and rising poverty, leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. Well, what the hell would rising poverty have anything to do with imposing strict uh, c citizen controls with face masks? Right? So they're very sloppy stuff here. Uh, at first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nobody likes this stuff. Can, They're can, just can saying it. Sit no, I have, have to, I have yeah, to, I have yeah. to provide you know, analysis. Only because we only have five minutes left, so that's Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. I mean, that's just a, a, that's just a complete naked contradiction to the famous saying that if you think you're going to give up a little bit of uh, security, I mean, if you want, if you're going to give up your freedom for security, you're going to get neither. That's the long standing thing. And here what they're doing is they're not even ashamed or embarrassed to absolutely say the exact opposite. They're saying, yes, we all want to give up our, our privacy and sovereignty for more stability and security and stability. So you don't get that. When you give it up like that, you get the shaft. That Can you show us the, t the cover again of I'll what you were just reading? One more just time, and then I have this two is more documents. Right, this two is more what documents. we were reading here, and just zoom in a little bit so folks can see it. He'll zoom in. Don't worry. You can relax. Right. And scenarios for the future of technology and international development. Okay. We now, I have two more documents. Me. Keep it zoomed. We have the National Security Memorandum right. of December 10th, 1974. This is Henry Hold Kissinger's brainchild. The National Security Memorandum number. 200. You can look that up on your internet. Internet. I'll summarize it. He says that there's too many people. We got to get rid of the population. So if, to answer your question, oh, from earlier. Yeah, yeah. He says he used the word depopulation, which is different. <laughs> depopulation means killing people that already exist, and it's to get the minerals because we need the minerals. And here's another one. The CDC has a patent on Ebola. They patented it. Yeah? Right. So basically, if you want to get a cure for your Ebola. Uh, you here it says go it right up here, right? It says human Ebola virus species and compositions and methods thereof, and it's a patent. It's a patent. Uh, they uh, patented the main strain plus something like 17 other strains of it. So they own it now, and I don't know how exactly you can own that, but apparently they've, they've done the same thing. Yeah, I didn't think you could own a natural... Yeah, you can. They've, uh, I guess the main thing to, 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 to finish off this show is this, that... Um, uh, that um, they want to get more control, more cur and it's and it's going to be curfews and quarantine. So what I'm saying is that unless the American people start to get some new um, way to uh, revolt, to, uh, a new way to organize, new way to protest, new uh, in, unless they, we can break through the uh, ap apathy, because that's what we have here, mm -hmm. uh, then it's going to be a slave state here. The ruling class doesn't seem to have too much resistance. They're getting everything on their Christmas. Uh, shopping list, and they've been wanting quarantines and curfews for a long time. Now they got it, and and. All right, so we heard it. Let's just do a little summary of it. What we just heard, Steve. Uh, we well, saw that it aired in 2014. This was out of six the years ago. Rockefeller documents from 2010, and now we can see that this this is scenarios for the future of technology an international development Rockefeller Foundation. So everything this man said was out of that book that they brought to existence in 2010, where they uh, described scenario that was just happening here. Where it confirms with also coronavirus. with my Pentagon source that has repeatedly told me that these <clears> things <throat> have been planned more than a decade in advance. 
and they have done their homework, done their research on how to control and right. how to bring about a one world government and for, as he even puts it as well, getting rid of the undesirables. And he talks specifically the very things that I've been saying for the, I've been saying it since 2013, my video that was deleted, Yana. Yes. I played back from 2013 when I clearly showed how that my secret meeting, which I didn't say that on that part of the video, I just talk about that uh, depopulation and the, the civil war against the black people. But it was told to me by an insider from the White House that I met with in Washington, D.C. Yes. Now, let me just do quick. I, I was doing a lot of notes while this man was speaking. But anyway, on page 18, there is a lockstep document where it speaks of quarantines and lockdowns and top-down government control. This is what they want to achieve. He said that even after pandemic leaves, the author authoritarian ways of government will stay. So they are not going, they just, they exactly. want to bring it as a new normal, as they say it now, the government has more control. They get into temperature checks and check on you. They're doing tracking, tracing, just like I was showing you in the previous um, document, uh, Rockefeller Foundation, how they're planning on tracking and tracing people yes. and testing, tracking, tracing, and all and the mere that. fact that they actually are speaking that they had this, <laughs> that this was going to be a virus in the first place, which we've known these things, but it re, it, it re, um, it's shocking that the, it was spoken evidence. of in 2014, and that's in this document here by Rockefeller Foundation from 2010. The next thing, what was he saying? He said that th the think tanks of death are Rockefellers, and they are dictating to CDC, okay, and all of these agencies. Yes. They want isolated world. They want to break global supply chain, okay, create artificially famine. They, they wanted to attack tourism industry. So anything like entertainment or anything like that for, for people, that's gone. You know, that's why they closed beaches. That's why they attack tourism. That's why they discourage flying and so on. Reptilians just do not want to see their slaves yeah. having a nice time. No, no. But they are saying everything is in the name of happiness. International Day of Happiness. Oh, wow. Capitalism. A new type of happiness. Wow. Interesting. And then also how they said that some countries fared well during the pandemic, like China. They made China an example as an epitome state for uh, having a success over this virus. And isn't it true? Even though we see the little argument between Trump and the Chinese, but isn't it true that when people begin to examine, Chinese were so brutal and so aggressive against their people that it gave the appearance that they were able to control a, a, this alleged virus far greater than any nation. Oh, yeah. They were saying that, that China was the most efficient form of tyrannical government in this document. So they liked it. They, they made China example. You know, China immediately quarantined and put entire population on lockdown, healthy or not, symptomatic or not. Well, guess what? The same thing happened here. And now there is no difference between China and America. China was masked and locked down. And the same thing happened here. So yes. pictures from China are here. No difference. Exactly. Okay. Body temperature checks, even going to supermarkets, that was happening in some markets here. And we can wait for the second wave. It probably will happen even more. Oh, yes. Okay, so uh, depopulation. He mentioned depopulation agenda. He said CDC has patents for Ebola. They own e Ebola. And he said that, you know, in 2014, unless American people find a new way of protesting, they stop being uh, having this apathy to everything. But we know it already came. It's 2020. It's here. New World Order is here. People had an apathy type of an apathy happening they didn't care what's happening and they walked right into it yes. and no resistance and i believe it's because of uh, no you know lack of proper education thing
Yes. The lack of proper They've knowledge. They've been dumbed down for years, and so yeah, exactly. it's just whatever, whatever the uh, the 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 shepherd, they got the false of shepherd says, they fall right for it. Let's exactly. move on though, because it is getting late. We've been here for almost yeah, I know, an hour. I know. It's kind of a long chat. Like, look, look at this. I'm a member of this Natural Health 365. It's like a private little group of um, medical doctors. They're also naturopaths, okay, <clears throat> and they are sending me. Uh, Sometimes daily, a kind of like, a, you know, a news on everything. So here we go. Could spraying children with disinfectant be the new normal? Can you imagine your child being sprayed with chemicals in schools? They're not connected with the Israel 365, I hope. No, they're not. Okay. Many parents have learned that they are not cut out of out to be teachers and even kids long to be back at school with friends but the debate surrounding the reopening of school is intense okay so as the uk debates this topic the mirror reported that teachers are suggesting that students be sprayed with disinfectant before entering school you know yana though i i really wonder if there ever is going to be a normal school classroom ever again anyway i mean you were already telling me about uh, some companies replacing their employees now with computer uh, AI technology now. And, and we've been seeing this in supermarkets oh, wow. for some I time. I forgot to bring this news. Yes, tomorrow yes. I'll put it on my news. Um, yeah, they are firing. They have fired something like 60 or 70 journalists. Journalists, the journalists yes. yes. AI and is and they're replacing the them with AI journalism. So no, no longer yes. the humans will bring you news. It will be AI that will be scanning news and bring news to people. Banker, Can you it'll be banking it? will be this way. You're going to see that teachers are going to be replaced, I believe, as well. Uh, this, is, uh, this is why they're not worried about you coming back to school. Okay, now here, this particular article with this group of uh, naturopathic doctors, they're warning people Okay, they are already spraying kids in South Korea and China with disinfectants. Okay, so here with c countries already implementing the use of disinfectant on children as they head back to school, it is possible this will become the new normal. Should we be worried? Surely they will only spray our children with disinfectant sprays containing chemicals approved by EPA. That should be comfort, right? Think again. These are the same people who gave their seal of approval to the wheat killer glyphosate, the active ingredient Roundup, Monsanto's widely used herbicide. Stephen, they're after our kids, they're after our humanity, they're after our health, and they're here to depopulate. Yes, they are. Yes. And yes, glyphosate, as you mentioned, <clears throat> is, is like the tip of the iceberg, but that caused cancer and every other kind of ailment you could imagine. Yes. And now look what's going on. Okay, let's see what, oh, here it is. Um, I would like to leave a link for people who don't have time to watch 22 minute video, but I'm gonna mention it here and you leave a link. This is a lady that uh, actually signed up to be a contact tracer. So she got her certificate and now she was- Can we she's play telling, a clip of this? Yeah, least? she's telling people everything. I've probably heard of contact tracing through your governor, through the news, as things that need to be implemented before we can go back to normal. But what is contact tracing? Let me share it with you and you're gonna be freaked out by the end of this video. Now, now what I did is I was very interested in this. So I went ahead and I got two certificates in terms of what it was to become a contact tracer. So I spent about nine hours. We're gonna wrap it up here in about 20 minutes to just give you the highlights of what contact tracing entails and how it's going to affect you. Because I guarantee you, it will affect you and your family. We talk about saving the lives and the livelihood of the American people and, and of course the life of our democracy. So in terms of saving lives, the only way we're going to have uh, rid ourselves of this as well as open up our economy uh, is evidence, science-based testing, testing, testing. Testing, tra just think of the T's, testing, tracing, treatment, and isolation then when necessary, of course, with social distancing. So let's look at the main points. Now, this is if you have COVID-19. You can either be done by test or by symptoms. 
Now, what our contract tracers know is that you can infect two days before and up to 10 days after. And how you can infect people is there's three definitions that were given in contact tracing school. One is physical, so you're hugging someone, you are kissing them, high-fiving them. Any physical contact, you could have given it to them. If you're close, within six feet for more than 10 minutes, so you're talking to someone and you're within that six feet social distancing number, well, you could infect them then. Let's say you're more than six feet apart, but for a longer time. At this point, you're thinking movie theaters, airplanes, trains, restaurants. So maybe not direct contact with somebody, but they're in the vicinity of the area for longer than 30 to 40 minutes. Now, what's going to happen is once you get a test that is positive, it goes to a tracer. And that tracer is going to do some research on you, find out a little bit about you, and give you a call. Now they're going to tell you that you, you tested positive and that you need to be isolated for a minimum of 10 days on the onset and it has to be within three, no fever for three days. So if you're on day nine but you still have a fever, you need to add another three days until your fever is cleared. And by isolation, I mean total isolation. This is nobody near you. Even your dog can't be there. So you can see here that specifically with a person that is symptomatic, they should maintain separation from household animals as they would any other household members and avoid direct contact with any of your pets. So you cannot contact your pets, people, anybody in your family. You need to be completely isolated. Now what that means is you could have to go into a hotel room um, if you have no way of not sharing a bathroom or any space. They will check that out. So you'll have to show like video evidence if the conference is done via teleconference. Walk them around your house. Let them know that you have space to be isolated. Now the next is quarantine. Quarantine means I am healthy. I have no symptoms. I have not contacted the disease. But maybe for 14 days, they're going to check to make sure that I haven't. So that means again that I cannot leave my house and as a contact tracer i'm supposed to set you up with social services so if you have kids um and you have no one to care for them we'll take your kids we'll take care of that if you have need groceries we'll do groceries but you literally cannot be in contact with anybody and you cannot leave your house even if you're healthy you are still quarantined not to be leaving the house unfortunately you could be totally healthy get out of quarantine and guess what?